Hello everyone, here's your latest weather update where we have three big stories we're going to be talking about today in the weather world here. Um, we actually have, we have that current severe weather outbreak that will stick with us for the remainder of the week here. Very above average, um, blatantly unseasonable temperatures here across um, the eastern portion of the country. That'll be our second um, portion of the story here. And of course, we have that current subtropical development that we're seeing in the Atlantic. So first off, of course, we have the severe weather threat that's getting to get out of that peak of severe weather season into and into the summer months. We still have a lot of thunderstorm activity to talk about. The threat for some thunderstorms that do develop, or at least the threat for them to be severe, is uh, more likely in this risk as you hear actually enhance this here, as I move into today's categorical risk. This risk you see right here, where it is uh, possible that some of these storms will end up being of the severe uh, variety, pulling into areas such as Southern Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, specifically uh, Southeastern Mon uh, Montana here, especially here in Northeastern Wyoming, really along the whole Eastern uh, border of Wyoming. North Central Colorado here, Western portions of uh, Kansas, even uh, sneaking into the Dakotas here, mainly in uh, Northwestern uh, South Dakota. North Dakota, we still have that marginal risk. So really the, the max risk we're seeing here is the slight risk. Um, so still a chance for those a few thunderstorms to pop up, especially with since we have this uh, low pressure here set up in Wyoming, pushing these thunderstorms in uh, really northeast here, moving through the t northern tier. So especially on um, the Dakotas here, especially all throughout Minnesota here, even in Wisconsin, all throughout Iowa. But these um, storms are still going to be a part of the same system we have here, um, mainly a part of this ridge that's pushing um, it's pushing all this um, moisture and warmer air uh, northwards. I'll get to that later. So of course this leads all the way down south as well, where we have this more severe weather. We actually have a couple areas that have some activity showing up on the radar here, where we have that moisture streaming up from the south here, while that next system is developing and working its way towards the east, um, triggering a few areas over several states. You can see some stronger storms today. Uh, now we look at what we're facing today as far as severe weather. We go to Louisiana and Texas here, uh, really along the border as well. Where we're seeing uh, really just along the Gulf, where we're seeing these um, active thunderstorms. So here's the Louisiana coastline here where we have persistent rains here from just outside of, uh, I'd say it's Morgan City, Louisiana, all the way to Baton Rouge here. Where we have seen um, very heavy rainfalls here, uh, very heavy rainfall rates here from last night all the way into today, and we're still getting these pop-up thunderstorms we're experiencing, although they are um, beginning to beginning to diminish um, slightly here, beginning to tone down a little bit, but we're still seeing these very heavy rainfalls in these areas, so the flash flood conditions are expected to continue here. The past 24 hours of, uh, of rain have been pretty substantial across this uh, zone here. Uh, even as we move westward into Texas here, we are seeing more of these pop-up showers and thunderstorms. We're actually looking at the most active thunderstorm here, or at least it was here a few minutes ago before I started recording. It was uh, it was um, just east of I-45 and just east of uh, Huntsville, Texas. I would say it's the most active severe thunderstorm because if you look back to the sea, um, storm prediction center outlook here, we see a wide area towards the north um, that can certainly hold the, that uh, development zone for these thunderstorms later on today. Uh, we haven't actually seen much activity yet in these areas as this area is uh, reasonably stable so far. Uh, however, there are some thunderstorms that are occurring in northern Minnesota as we uh, look back to the Euro model here. I actually look back on the um, satellite earlier and I saw some lightning show up as well. So these are quite severe here in northern Minnesota. They can actually get all the way up to the Canadian border, which you're seeing now, and finally beginning to cross over. There's actually not much happening yet on the western side of the plains, uh, really in the Midwest here. Some um, some other severe thunderstorms can especially show up here in the um, really the eastern Rockies, getting into the um, getting into more more of the plains here, more of the western uh, Midwest here across uh, portions of Colorado and Wyoming. We can see that severe weather later on today. All part of this low is going to be um, moving on through here. So this is actually why we're seeing some of this cloud development here in um, Casper, Wyoming. I'll actually go ahead and move to the cloud cover here. Again, we see we have this um, kind of a lull here in portions of the Midwest. In areas that are expected to, um, so it's quite stable right now, but it's not expected to last very long as we're going to see some thunderstorms show up later on today and even into tomorrow as well. Especially right here in portions of Colorado and Wyoming. Not much cloud development yet, but as we get closer to this system, this low pressure system, it's beginning to um, lead to more cloud development here. So, which will finally bring, uh, finally uh, trigger the trigger these storms that will get going in the northern tier later today. So, that, so we're actually move on to our next big picture of the week here. Something uh, more of you may be looking forward to. I cannot find a tab. Sorry, guys. Um, here it is. Uh, the temperature anomaly here really at a uh, ground level, where we're looking at uh, summer temperatures for a good portion of the Midwest, Mid-Atlantic, uh, Ohio Valley, even the Northeast here, where we have um, 5 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit above average uh, in temperatures here. 
as a big ridge um, of high pressure bring some of this, these warmer temperatures some of the warmest we've seen this year so far we could even break records this weekend in um in areas especially in the carolinas as well i know um i believe charleston can possibly reach up to 100 degrees later this week so very um very hot temperatures very um summer like temperatures here so meanwhile as we take another look here to the southern plains i'd like to just fixate on this um flood risk we have here uh in place as we're seeing ongoing problems with flooding due to the days and days of soaking thunderstorms that have really just been dumping all this rain on these areas all across um, southern Lu Louisiana especially. We have flash flood warnings even in place here along um, in areas closer to Baton Rouge here, closer to the uh, Mississippi border really and that um, even closer to some of the bays in that area. We even have the flood warnings all really scattered across the state. Even in Fort Worth, Texas, like I said, we have pop-up thunderstorms that are uh, persistently showing up on the radar here, uh, relentlessly dropping this, dumping all this rain on these areas that are seeing more and more as the ground is getting soaked more and more which is more favorable of flash flooding as we're seeing now in these areas right here really in uh, uh eastern eastern louisiana here really in that uh panhandle we have here then we're looking at a future radar here this is on um, the current um 12z radar this is actually the euro model as we just move up here into even in later today um in about 12 hours from now about uh midnight just after midnight you can see we still have this rain showing up here in portions of Louisiana. Really, that's um, in that same area that the marginal risk was showing up, just stretching all the way from here into the Gulf, ranging all the way up into the uh, into the northern tier, into the into the Great Lakes region, even um, spawning some thunderstorms in that area. So, really, this low pressure system right here, um, colliding with this um high pressure system we have here, creating this this giant ridge. Is really pushing all this moisture in from the Gulf uh, with this um, southerly flow across these uh, regions here. All this moisture spawning some thunderstorms here that we've been seeing across portions of the southern plains, stretching all the way into the Great Lakes region. So it's really, I'd like to say, I'd like to blame the cause here on this um, low pressure and this high pressure system over here, creating this big ridge here that these thunderstorms are just following along with a part of this jet, delivering a lot of these um, more severe thunderstorms into places such as Minnesota, um, Wisconsin, and soon as we get into later tonight and into until later this afternoon, we're going to see a lot of thunderstorms pop up around here in the Midwest as well. Uh, even as we look into a more detailed radar here, the high uh, resolution reflectivity radar, we see um, that there's less less instability here, less thunderstorm activity. Uh, you can say in portions of Iowa and Kansas here, even into Nebraska, we're seeing more of just rain showers here, although we have some thunderstorms here. Really, like I said, they're more scattered. Uh, I believe even popcorn thunderstorms, you could call them here spawning across texas and louisiana oh this is actually this is actually into tonight we're still seeing this so if you look to right now on the ref reflectivity radar you see they're actually more you can see the reds and yellow showing up so we, like i said that, that actually indicates much heavier vein which is what these areas the opposite of what they need right now after all of the rain they've already received just this past week so which is why we're seeing a lot of this flooding is showing up even like i said we even have flash flood warnings in a lot of these areas as well um like i said the storms even ranging all the way up into the the Midwest here, even into the um, Northern Plains, seeing some showers pop up in Oklahoma. Only expect to do enhance as we move more westward into Wyoming and Colorado, into the Rockies here, as this is where this low pressure is. Like I said, we're already seeing more cloud development and some pop up showers. Uh, only expected to increase in terms of well severe weather. So now we move into our final story here regarding the tropics and this upcoming Atlantic hurricane season. Can you guys believe hurricane season is less than two weeks away? I really can't believe it. And the uh, NOAA has officially released their forecast for the upcoming season here. But we're actually expecting a range between 13 to 20 named storms. Of that, um, 6 to 10 could become, could become hurricanes, including the potential for 3 to 5 major hurricanes. So Colorado State University, now NOAA, are both predicting a busier than average season here. There were actually uh, 30, named, 30 names last season. Uh, so a very uh, above average busy season just last year 13 of which were hurricanes so i believe six had a direct impact on the u.s including hannah which impacted um, southern texas um isaias in the carolinas and moved um, northwards into the atlantic states then there was also laura that really impacted louisiana um and then there's sally which slammed the gulf coast and pushed uh southeastwards into really the same area that laura affected into uh the gulf states there so the big question is where are these numbers coming from and why would it be such a busy season it's actually a scientific endeavor that has been going on over the past several years now, trying to attain a handle on how many storms the atmosphere and the ocean could support or sustain for the upcoming season. 
So one of the factors that scientists uh, actually observe is the water temperature. In the Atlantic Ocean right now, there is a huge uh, basin of warm temperatures, really above average water temperatures, that really, really just increase the chance for tro um, tropical storms to develop. We're all seeing a uh, rather strong Bermuda high over the Atlantic this year as well, uh, very similar to last year. So there is also a likely chance that we see some more of these uh, tropical storms make their way into the Gulf, especially the hurricanes that have a uh, more, more stronger momentum. Uh, another thing I'm noticing on this map is the uh, El Nino versus uh, La Nina zone here in the Central Pacific. We actually have this contrast between below and um, above average water temp temperatures here. So last year was actually a La Nina year, often associated with more tropical tropical systems and stronger tropical storms, as the long-term La Nina average is actually much stronger than an El Nino or neutral neutral season. This is for major hurricanes, uh, mind you, by year. However, uh, this year we'll actually be changing out of a La Nina season and transitioning towards a more neutral season. Then again, if we go back to a recent neutral hurricane season years, uh, there are still active uh, years. There's still active years such as 2012 that had 19 named storms with four U.S. landfalls. I believe 2018 had 15 named storms with four U.S. landfalls. Meaning, just because we're transitioning to a neutral season does not mean you should let your guard down in terms of major hurricanes here. Um, in support of this, we act, we're actually um. All we're looking at an early season storm here is actually referred to as Invest 90L, which we have a system moving on through the Atlantic here. Uh, there's actually an 80% chance that we'll have this uh, this the season's first tropical system by the weekend, according to the National Hurricane uh, Center here. A non-tropical low uh, pressure system is already developed within a broad area of cloudiness and thunderstorms. About this is about 600 miles east uh, southeast of Bermuda. This low is actually expected to develop gale force winds later today while it moves generally northward but uh the low is forecast uh to move west and southwest over warmer waters on friday and that's the main reason why it will likely become a short-lived subtropical cyclone around northeast of bermuda now uh the chance of formation over the next five days is very high at 90 percent the national hurricane center's tropical weather outlook as of thursday morning said the low pressure system is actually located about 800 miles east of Bermuda. Now keep in mind, I'm just gonna go over some hurricane history here. The 2020 Atlantic uh, hurricane season broke records by producing 30 named storms. And the 2021 hurt tropical season is actually forecasted to be just right on its heels here with the predicted 17 named storms, eight hurricanes, and four major hurricanes. The season actually begins June 1st here in the Atlantic and runs through November 30th. Uh, an average season typically spawns seven hurricanes and peaks in August and September. If these predictions are verified, it will actually be the sixth cons consecutive year of, of above normal activity. Overall, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration said thir 13 to 20 named storms will actually develop. This number includes tropical storms as well, which contain wind speeds of 30 miles, uh, 39 miles an hour or higher. Uh, storms, become, storms become hurricanes when wind speeds reach 74 miles per hour. Of the predicted hurricanes, 3 to 5 could actually be major, packing wind speeds of 111 miles uh, per hour or even higher. So but these predicted warmer than average sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea as well are actually not the only factor of why we're seeing such a busier season. Some of the studies here are the weaker tropical Atlantic trade winds, mean with, which also means uh, weaker wind shear. So that also ups the tropical cyclones to develop. We also have an enhanced West African monsoon season that will likely be factors of in this year's overall activity um the el nino southern um oscillation or enzo which is more of a neutral season uh c these conditions are currently in the neutral phase here with the possibility of the return of a la nina later in the hurricane season keep in mind this is not official but this is, these are just some predictions here um that may actually happen uh the enzo neutral and the la nina support the conditions associated with the ongoing high activity area so a lot of these storms here can develop very quickly, and like I said, we're going to have a very um, very strong Bermuda high, which can actually push these into the Gulf here. So like I said, guys, a very high activity era, um, a very high activity season we're expecting here. Um, and El Nino, which is a natural warming of the ocean, um, water in the tropical Pacific Ocean tends to um, suppress Atlantic hurricane activity. Um, its counterpart, the La Nina, a cooling of that same water usually boosts the number of hurricanes in that um, in the Atlantic. I believe I actually went over this in one of my previous videos. I believe with the March outlook, I gotta go over um, the different phases of different phases of the uh, Pacific Ocean here, which have a big impact on Atlantic hurricane season. I believe I went over that in one of my previous videos. But uh, last year, I believe they were actually predicted 13 to 19 uh, named tropical storms that would spin up, uh, of which to of of which six to ten would be hurricanes in all a record of 30 30 named storms 
So last year's hurricane season really outdid um, everybody here. Very um, unexpected, took a very unexpected turn here due to a lot of these conditions in the La Nina season. I believe had a big impact on it as well. So this year, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, uh, otherwise known as NOAA, has released the hurricane season forecast to the 21, 2021 hurricane season. Uh, actually, I just went over that a few minutes ago. But the season forecast calls for another above average hurricane season overall in terms of the total number of storms. So this year may be another interesting season here. Uh, I'm not sure what to expect. Uh, then again, we have other factors such as the monsoon season I referred to, as well as the um, weaker trade winds and weaker wind shear. Um, very strong Bermuda high, but then again, we're also in that neutral season. But like I said before, um, 2012 and 2018 um, hurt Atlantic hurricane seasons produced very strong major hurricanes, even though, I mean, despite it being a neutral season. So again, guys, the United States hurricane season runs from June 1st through November 30th. So like I said, less than two weeks away, very just right around the corner here. And then again, like I said, the peak is really on September 10th. That's when we refer to the peak. There's actually no correlation between the number of storms and hurricanes that form um, and landfalls in the U.S. A quiet season can still produce a very strong hurricane that still that could still make landfall in the U.S. So we, despite all the numbers, even if we had one hurricane that we're predicting, we can't really, um, can't really have a good understanding on it whether it will be a major hurricane or not. These are not very, um, these are not always very accurate. So even if there is just one hurricane, for instance, which is very unlikely of happening, but, but say the, the National Hurricane Center is only predicting one hurricane for this upcoming season, you should still keep in mind that this could be a, a major hurricane. Um, especially when you have all these other factors considered. So th this is why residents should prepare each year in the matter of the forecast. So just keep that in mind, guys. See whether you're aware, and especially with this upcoming hurricane season, it could be a very busy one. Like I said, we're already seeing a, uh, tro a tropical system develop here. Uh, it's actually disturbance number one. Like I said, 80% chance of cyclone uh, formation in the next 48 hours. So you can see here a non-tropical low-pressure system located about 650 miles east, uh, northeast of Bermuda. Is now moving northward. Uh, recent satellite wind da data indicates that the system has gale force winds, like I just, like I just told you guys. Um, the low is expected to turn um, westward and west southwestward over warmer waters tonight and Friday. Like I said, this could definitely, um, this can certainly intensify this, and get, it could possibly become a subtropical system here. Not nothing too, not nothing too strong by any means. Um, not very concerning, but still a very early season storm we have um, going on here in the Atlantic. Like I said, expected to be a, uh, a rather busier above average season here this this upcoming season. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this little update here. Uh, I know it was rather short than usual, but it, there was only a few topics I just wanted to go over. Especially with this hurricane season, I feel like I really needed to um, go over this and where it'll be. Um, where, where some areas could see most of this tropical activity here. Like I said, I believe the Gulf could receive some more of the some more of the major hurricanes this year. As for what um, we're predicting here. But like I said, I just went over the um, NOAA's hurricane prediction here for this upcoming season so i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this i'll see you guys in the next one